in the NERA archives, I found a report of a stone chamber in central Massachusetts. Recently, I set out to find it. Located just off the highway, in a small wooded area not very fit for farming, the stone chamber is buried into the side of a small hill. The local terrain is rocky, and there are multiple extruding ridges within a relatively small local geologic formation containing amphibolite, biotite schist, and gneiss. There are two small streamlets in the immediate vicinity, both of which run off into a nearby river in one of Massachusetts' 28 major watersheds. There wasn't much information in the near reports about the chamber, let alone any other stonework around it. There was mention of a possible chimney out of the back of it, but I did not see clear enough evidence that there had been one, and if there was, it had been removed and its place on the back wall had been refilled. The old report said to park nearby and follow the power lines in, and I did just that. On the way in, I saw a small stone pile, but only one, and didn't think much of it. Then I saw a long, undulating stone wall. Perhaps it was a snake effigy. I would follow this wall in to the rest of the site. I also saw what looked like a small niche. But was it originally built into the wall, or was it the result of stones being toppled off the wall when a tree fell? Along the wall was a strange rock formation that looked like a bird effigy, and it was propped underneath. It wasn't long before I decided to take readings on the walls. So here we've got a stone wall, two of them actually. It aligns to the winter solstice sunset on one side, and then on the other side, it aligns to the summer solstice sunrise. Let's see what this wall aligns to, if anything. My guess is it's going to be south or southwest. Southeast, okay. Who knows, maybe the sun rises at that point over there. Maybe there's a mountain behind this that we can't see through the trees, and that's where they first see the sun. It's a possibility, but there might be three alignments on this one wall. Winter solstice, sunset, winter, summer solstice, sunrise, and then maybe, maybe, winter solstice sunrise so I've been following the stone wall in right stone row it's tough to see but it comes in here it's a little disturbed in this area and then it comes over to here and this big rock which from the side kind of looks like profile maybe at least down in that area. But anyway, I'm looking around behind it. Actually, I'm out here looking for a stone chamber. And so all of this stuff is piquing my interest. But anyway, I'm here, and I'd already taken a reading on a part of the wall that runs out that way to the southeast. And... I just happened to squat down behind this and notice that it seems to be aligned to the winter solstice sunrise. Which, for this to happen purely by chance is, uh, you know, a very, very small chance of that happening. In reality but anyway I then noticed as I came to start this video giant quartz pieces or you know at least handful size quartz pieces so there's a quartz vein running through here that's another thing of interest so we've got the stone wall, that's a better view, that runs 
this side points to winter solstice sunset that side points to summer solstice sunrise this rock here that the wall leads in front of you know it, it goes off that way but it leads to this place this is aligned to the winter solstice sunrise and then you've got pieces of quartz there plus I know there's a chamber in this area we will be finding and locating that but all of this is evidence that lends to the possibility that this is a site that was worked by Native Americans so let's keep going actually we can't wander off just yet I turned around I said hey let me grab a picture of this from the other side and I looked at it and underneath in the front it's it's propped up but it's interesting how from this angle it looks like a bear face but as you can see that stone which I couldn't see from the back props it up and there's even another one under there but this one here in the front is uh, just another sign just another sign that this may very well be a Native American stone site people ask me all the time what a Native American stone site is and it's like so hard to describe because there's so many things anyway one more picture and then I'm moving on let's go find that chamber right on the other side of the stone here uh, that's where all that other stuff was stone wall meanders around Comes down here, goes off down in that direction, and then turns and goes that way. And so I came down here and I'm looking, and I know I'm close to the stone chamber, but I'm looking. And I look at this, and I don't know if you can tell, but just next to this small pine tree. There's a depression, and I'm like, maybe that's it. So I came around to up over here. I saw this giant stone, and I said, oh, this has to be it. And I went back up and started the video. So I actually haven't seen this yet. But what I want to do is get a glance at this for obvious signs of colonial working don't really see any obvious signs whoa here we go way cool way cool wow very square very square Giant pieces of quartz lying out in front. Hmm. Very square. All right. Let me, uh, let me get my phone out, take some readings. And see what we got here. Let me record on this. The interesting thing in this is it looks like the back corner is aligned to north. 
it looks like the back corner is aligned to north. All right. Let's go in and have a look while we can. Don't have my light with me today. So I can't light this up. But it's very square. As we can see, it's very square. Looks like this side is caved in a bit. But no obvious no obvious tool marks on the stone so far. We don't see any of the kind of tool marks that we would expect to see when we look at colonial stonework. Let's go in and look around a bit more. any obvious tool marks. But it is very, very square. We've got one, two, three lintel stones. Now obviously there's mortar in here, cement. That could have been added much later. I don't know why. If you have a stone chamber like this, you would feel the need to cement it unless you're worried about a collapse, but this structure looks pretty solid. I'm looking, and again, I don't see any obvious signs. We've got that big lintel stone there. We've got this big lintel stone here. And I don't know if you can see that, but we've got one in the back. This one's much more rough than one in the back. Let's see if my phone can add any light. It's very, very square. It looks like some stones are missing there. Like they've been pulled out or something. Anyway, let's uh, let's get some readings on this. Okay, I've got my sun seeker out. Let me uh. Let me start recording that. Not looking at anything but south from here. Between Maybe 159, 160, to maybe 192, 193 south. But it's all south. It's not southeast, not southwest. Okay, so they're not looking at the sun from here. 
they're, mo they're most likely not looking at the moon either because it has a similar... Actually, you know what? This might be Lunar Maximum. Huh. Let me stop this uh, camera for a minute. Alright folks, it took a little bit of research, but I think I have a, a theory here. So, I currently have the right wall of this aligned to about 155 degrees southeast. Now, what's the significance of 155 degrees east? That is the where the Native American entrance from the underworld is located. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Right down here. 155 entrance from the underworld. Now this is a chart that says all these different compass bearings and what it is and what it means to Native Americans. And this is here, 155 degrees entrance from the underworld. And this was something that was sent to me by Tim McSweeney. It's posted on Rock Piles blog. And uh, thank you, Tim. Now at least I've got a, a theory here. So this is what we've got when we hold it to this wall. We got 155 degrees southeast. So there's actually that rock over there is is like directly in line with this. So I think we should go check that out. All right, so I'm outside the chamber and we're gonna go walk over to that rock formation and check it out. Huh. Uh, on the way to do that, there appears to be a stone circle here of unknown origin. Actually, it looks like there's two circles. Huh. Strange. Not sure if that's modern or not, but so you get an understanding of its relation to the chamber straight out in front of it. Is this the entrance from the underworld? Well, we've got this interesting split rock here. I mean, it looks like it's all splitting, but this one in particular. Is that a wedge stone down in there? doesn't appear to be a wedge stone because it goes behind this. Like 
Could this be a wedstone? Well, it does keep them separated. That's for sure. Is it a wedstone? I don't know. I'll never be able to tell if anyone placed that there purposefully or not. Strange shape here. Could be a nose and a forehead and a mouth. And again, it's all looking up. May this have been shaped by the hand of man. Certainly looks like a nostril here. That is where the nose would end. Okay, I see. This is an outcrop of ledge. I want to get over to that boulder down there and see. Let's turn the camera back on when I get there. So this whole side just looks like pieces of rock broken off the ledge outcrop. I mean, they go all the way down. There's pieces all the way, all the way down. Not quite sure if it means anything. I thought this might have been propped, but it's not. Some weird looking stuff back there, but it all just kind of looks like natural breakage to me. Is it possible? that this rock was being broken down and quarried possibly to build the stone walls around here who knows stone wall that starts up over there comes down this way there's an opening the stone wall continues up that way it also makes its way down here down there over that way there's another one that goes out in that direction In the middle of all these stone walls, we've got a couple of small stone piles. Not sure if they're field clearing piles or what, but it's interesting to note that they're here. There's 
just want to document that these stones are there. Looks like potential lintel stones. Or at least these are the kinds of stones that would be used as lintel stones. They're not too far from the first chamber actually. So for these to be dragged to where the chamber is isn't really out of the question. Out here we've got what looks like the beginning of a stream. There's behind this tree or these trees there's this big outcrop of ledge but then on the other side there isn't really much and it looks like all the water from the area drains down into this little it's not even a pond but this little area of wetland and it's all rock underneath too so it's not like it has anywhere to go and then obviously it starts to go out that way and eventually I'm sure that leads to a larger river all water does but it's interesting to note that there's one that comes down from this way too and that's even closer to where the stone chamber is so just wanted to make a note of that because it's interesting these stone chambers sometimes are in relation to water the locations are they've been frequently found to be at the head of a small stream that eventually leads into a larger river it's tough to see but stone row here okay and it goes off up in that direction but I saw this and wondered if it could be a stone seat it is in the middle of this row now there's also this behind it that big stone in the back there uh, so I believe it warrants some investigation. Let's break out the Sun Seeker. Might have a summer solstice alignment on it. Alright, so that could possibly have a summer solstice sunrise alignment to it. But I'm here in the highway, so that means there isn't much space bet left between me and the highway. I happened upon this double stone row, and based on my experience, Looking at double stone rows. My first thought of snake effigy. So we've got this one here on this side, and then we've got this one here on this side. And at first I wasn't thinking much of it because I thought it would go on for quite a bit. However, I noticed it comes to an end right here and there's this stone down here there's this stone here but this stone down over this way from the other side of the wall looks like kind of a an effigy face effigy So let's go look at that. I just think it's an interesting end 
to the stone wall. Let's get a little further back because you can see it from further away. Or maybe, let's get a little closer. My eyes can see it closer than the camera can. This would be the hair. This would be the top of the head. This would be the front of the face. This would be maybe the eye here or here. And the nose would be here. Oops, the nose would be here. Maybe the eye is here. This little round circle where it's here. Put the nose here and then the mouth down here. That's what I see. It's possible. Who knows? Maybe I'm making stuff up, hallucinating. I don't know. But it's worth noting that it's here at the end of the at the end of one of the sides of the double stone row. Um so yeah. Well folks, I have searched and searched and searched out here for at least an hour and I probably an hour and a half. But that's gonna be all for me for this location. All in all, there's some good stuff out here. And the implication that the stone chamber might be oriented to the entrance from the underworld is uh, something new for me. So, not a waste of time out here. Hope you enjoyed the content. Subscribe, like, follow. Join the Facebook group, share photos of your own, photos, videos, whatever you want. That's it, I'm out. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching this episode of Northeast's Historical Stone Sites Investigations and Explorations. If you're interested in learning more about this topic, join Nira at nira.org and join Nessie at nessie.com. Becoming a member of Nessie supports continued production of this series. You may also make one-time or recurring donations.